What's up everybody, Chris here from Chris Gates Fitness. I am back with another episode and today what we're gonna talk about is the early steps here of the three phase diet program that I am testing out. Um, and what I wanna focus on specifically in this episode for the most part is uh, how to set up the nutritional piece of this puzzle to the three phase diet program. So we're gonna talk a lot about um, how to get started, how to know what your calories should look like, how to set up each of the three different phases within this program, how to track and adjust to make sure that you're making progress. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience so far. If you missed it last week, I just started this three-phase diet plan, uh, and I have details about it on my website, chrisgatesfitness.com. So if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, I would encourage you to do so. I've set up a diet plan that I think should be very effective and very sustainable, and I'm testing it out myself to make sure that it actually is just that, effective and sustainable. And uh, so far through one week, things are going pretty well. And uh, I'm excited to break down for you how things have gone. And like I said, start by giving you a top level view of how the nutrition piece to this program comes together. And my plan is to uh, record a podcast episode for next week that talks you through the training piece of this program. Because while it's a weight loss program, there and there's going to be a lot of emphasis on the nutrition and uh, how you're structuring what you eat every day. Obviously, training and the stimulus that you provide yourself is going to be something that's really a catalyst for weight loss. So we're going to talk about that next week, but this week we're going to focus on the nutrition piece. So we're going to get into that in just a second. Um, before we do, as always, I like to remind you that uh, you can get these episodes of the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and I'd uh, really appreciate it and encourage you to head over to either of those platforms, um, hit subscribe so you get every episode, and if you could, leave a five-star rating and a review. That really helps uh, raise the visib visibility of the podcast uh, and, and helps my goal of getting this information in front of as many people as possible to help as many people as possible. You can also watch episodes of these uh, podcast episodes on my Facebook page and my YouTube account. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, any of those platforms, whether it's the to subscribe to the podcast or one of the social media platforms, all you got to do is look up Chris Gates Fitness and you're going to find me there. So I'd appreciate you following along. Also, I am a coach and you know it makes sense that as a coach, I would test out a lot of my programs before I put them out there to people to actually use. That's what I'm doing with this specific program. Um, and you know... As, as part of that, I, I love to work with people to help them put these types of programs in place to accomplish whatever goals that you may have. So if you have a weight loss goal or if you're interested in building muscle or if you have some type of competition that you're preparing for, like say you're running a half marathon or uh, something like that. If you want to get stronger, say you want to add weight to your squat, bench and deadlift, uh, any of those types of goals, that's what I'm here for. That's the type of people that I coach. So uh Please reach out if you have a goal and you're interested in getting some coaching to help you uh, get to it, uh, to that goal. Uh, you can find all the information about my coaching on chrisgatesfitness.com. Uh, you can also feel free to reach out to me on any of those social media platforms that I mentioned before. There's a contact uh, page on my website where you can reach out to me if you have any questions. So with all that said, let's get into the focus of today's podcast episode, which uh, like I said, is for the three-phase diet plan, how to set up your nutritional strategy for this program. Um, and I gave some basic information in the overview article I wrote for this. I, I said, you know, phase one is going to be about setting up a an aggressive calorie deficit to start this uh, this diet program. And that aggressive calorie deficit is going to last for three weeks. You're going to move into the second phase, which is weeks four, five, and six. And that second phase is going to have you bring your calories up to maintenance. So you're going to add some calories back into your diet, give yourself a little period of, uh, you know, relaxed flexibility in terms of your diet, still structured, but there's some more flexibility there you can take a break from the dieting and get ready for the next phase, the third phase, which is weeks seven, eight, and nine. 
And that's where you're going to get back into another aggressive calorie deficit to round out this diet program and reach the goal that you have. So I laid out that basic information and I wanted to share that again with you here in case you missed it. But that's a lot of terminology and a lot of things that I'm telling you to do that you may not know how to do. So let's start with the basics and talk about how you can do things like create a calorie deficit for yourself and set maintenance calories for yourself and also figure out how to monitor all of this to make progress. So for starters, you're going to need to take a look at your regular daily nutrition, Uh, not within a diet program, but just the regular run of the mill, what you eat now uh, that has maybe gotten you to be in a place that you want to lose some weight. Uh, What I want you to do is get started with this diet plan by first understanding how much you've been eating on a regular basis. So before you even start with day one of phase one of this diet program, you need to take at least a week and document everything that you're eating. So that may sound like a really uh, insurmountable task, but I promise you it's not. Uh, There's a lot of technology out there that can help you track what you eat easily. Uh, Personally, I recommend an app called MyFitnessPal. There are a lot of others out there just like it. I recommend MyFitnessPal because of all of the Uh, nutrition tracking apps that are out there. It's the one I found has the largest library of foods uh, to the point that there's rarely if ever been something I've eaten that I haven't been able to pull up in the app. And and those, these apps, if you're not familiar with them, they're, they're, pretty user-friendly and self-explanatory once you download the app and start working with it. But basically what you're supposed to do is log each meal. So if you have, you know, rice and chicken and, you know, a dessert, you go into the app and you type in exactly what those are. Or if you ate something that was pre-packaged and it has a barcode, you can scan that barcode and it'll automatically pop up in the app And it's going to give you the nutritional information for all of the things that you ate. So you're going to get the calories, you're going to get your uh, macronutrients like your carbohydrates, your protein, your fat. It's going to help you put everything into one place and tally it all up so that if you do that over the course of a week, by the end of that week, you're going to be able to evaluate your diet. You're going to be able to see some trends in what you're eating, whether you like to eat different things every day, or if you eat a lot of the same things regularly. And quite honestly, we all tend to gravitate to a lot of the same foods on a daily basis. So that that's almost always one of the trends that people find when I have them do this is that, oh, you know, I actually have some, you know, of my daily diet, 70% of the calories I eat are actually the same foods on a daily basis. What I want you to do is take at least a week track your regular nutrition, how you're eating right now. Don't don't try and pretty it up so it looks good in there because then you're just lying to yourself and you're not going to set yourself up with the best possible starting point and you're not going to be able to set yourself up with a sustainable plan as we dive into the phases of this diet program. So that's what I want you to do. Track your food for a week at least and uh, you know see what the trends are and most importantly, find out on average how many calories you're eating each day. Uh, if we if we get anything out of this process, it should be how many calories on average are you eating each day on a regular basis. The reason we want to find out how many calories you're eating on average is because we're going to use that number to then set up the different calorie intake numbers that we want you to hit in each of the phases for this dieting program. So two out of the three phases are based around creating a calorie deficit. And what a calorie deficit is, essentially, if we dumb it down, it is putting you in a position where you are burning more calories than you are taking in each day. We want you to create a calorie deficit and we want to create actually a pretty aggressive calorie deficit in phases one and phases three of this program. So when we have that average number that you found from the week or more that you tracked your regular diet, I want you to take that number and I want you to subtract 20 to 25% from that number 
And that's going to set you up with your, what I'm calling your aggressive calorie deficit. So let me give you an example. We'll use some hypothetical numbers here uh, to put together the program, the phase one calorie, aggressive calorie deficit that I'm talking about. So let's say after that week of tracking, before you get started with this program, you find out on average, you're eating about 2,800 calories a day. Well, since you're eating about 2,800 calories a day, that means you want to subtract 20 to 25% of those calories to set up your aggressive deficit. So that would be between 2,100 and 2,240 calories a day. Um, That is because we took 2,800 and multiplied it by 0.2, and then we took 2,800 and multiplied it by 0.25, and those are the numbers that we subtracted from your your daily average calories. So you could pick a number in that range that you think is going to be sustainable and then we'll use that. That's going to be your starting point. Your day 1 phase 1 aggressive calorie deficit. That's what we're talking about. That's going to be your number. And uh we'll continue to build on this these hypothetical numbers in this example as we go along. And then at the end I'll share some of my numbers and how I did it for myself. So we have our aggressive calorie deficit. We know what the range is and uh, we can move on to the second piece of the puzzle which is going to be establishing your maintenance calories. So maintenance calories the 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 rationale behind this is that we want to bump your calories up. Like I said at the beginning, give yourself some more flexibility and um give yourself a little bit of a mental and physical break before we hit the diet hard again in the final three weeks of this thing. So during maintenance calories, pretty straightforward, we want you to maintain whatever body weight you're at after the first three weeks of this diet. So we had those numbers before, right, where we subtracted 20 to 25% of your average calories to set up your aggressive calorie deficit. Well, what I want you to do in maintenance is of those calories that you subtracted from your average, I want you to add half of them back in. So let's use the example that we started uh, just a few minutes ago where you had the 2100 to 2240 calories a day because you you took 20 to 25% out. Well, let's say within that range, you decided on 2200 calories a day. That's how many calories you're going to eat each day during your aggressive calorie deficit. So originally you were eating 2,800 calories a day before this diet started. Then you dieted on 2,200 calories a day. That's a 600 calorie difference. Half of that is 300. So I want you to add 300 calories back in and for weeks four, five, and six, that's going to be your maintenance. So you're going to add 300 calories back in to the 2,200 calories you were dieting on, and you will be dieting on maintenance at 2,500 calories a day. And that, like I said, will be for weeks four, five, and six before we then go into phase three, where you drop back down to 2,200 calories a day, and that's your aggressive calorie deficit to finish out the diet. Again, these are hypothetical numbers. I don't want you to take exactly what I'm saying and use it because I promise you if you do that, it will not work. (laughs) So don't even try. These are hypothetical numbers based on absolutely nothing. These numbers should be based on you. I'm just providing them as an example so you can kind of wrap your mind around how some of the math comes together to set this type of thing up. So you got your Uh, aggressive calorie deficit now for phases one and three. You've got your maintenance calories for phase two. I mean, now at this point, you got everything set up. It's all about just hitting the ground running day one, week one, right? That that's essentially true, but we can't just assume that these numbers are going to be, you know, foolproof and work exactly how we want them. And everything's going to work out uh, perfectly. No, we need to continue tracking things as we go through this diet. We need to track and potentially adjust as we move through the different phases because, you know, as you lose weight, your body's, you know, calorie needs are going to change. Your energy expenditure may change and you may need to do more or eat less or change things, uh, to continue making the progress that you're looking for. So the only foolproof way to do that is to continue tracking what you eat every day to see how it impacts your body weight. Um, I've written an article on exactly how you should weigh yourself. And I, I strongly encourage you to check that out because, 
Weighing yourself every day is something that I think is extremely important. It's a very, very easy thing to do. All you have to do is wake up in the morning, use the bathroom, and step on the scale. It's a way to make it consistently, as consistently accurate as we possibly can. And that's what's going to help you best understand whether or not you are uh, losing weight, uh, losing weight at the rate at which you want to, and moving towards the goal that you have uh, in an efficient manner. So, you know, tracking your food, weighing yourself every day, there's a lot of different elements that you can uh, work on to uh, essentially journal your day and find out what's working and find out what's not. Um, So, I'd encourage you to check out that article, and also I, I have an article on the site up right now about the what we're talking about here, the nutritional piece to this three-phase diet program, and um, check out the track and adjust section of that article. There's a lot of good tips in there for you to just see what you can track and how that may relate to potential adjustments you can make along the way. So... With all that said, let me give you uh, some examples of how this has worked out for me so far. Um, My plan, I found that I was averaging before the diet started, uh, I was taking in about 3,000 calories a day, and that was all part of the plan. I've been on a a lean bulk for quite a bit now, about six months, and um, my goals were to build muscle and build strength, so I was in a calorie surplus um, so for me to transition into an aggressive calorie deficit, I, I went ultra aggressive with this just considering I was eating so many calories uh, a day. So for myself, I set up my aggressive calorie deficit at 2000 calories a day for phases one and three. And then my maintenance calories for phase two uh, are 2500 calories a day. So I am one week into this uh, plan so far, and I have actually lost about five pounds on my aggressive calorie deficit. I've not found it to be all that, um, and not overly difficult really so far. Um, there's, there's still 14 more days here in the, in the first phase. So I'm sure at some point it'll get a little more challenging, but I've found it to be pretty manageable to diet on 2000 calories. Um, it's like I said, it's, it's aggressive, maybe ultra aggressive, but knowing that I have that phase two where I'm going to get to bump calories up, it makes it easier for me to kind of, you know, rough it through these lower calorie days. Cause I know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And that's really what this program is built around. It's built around giving you that light at the end of the tunnel and really not at the end of the tunnel in this diet program, it's a light in the middle of the tunnel, um, to give you a break. Uh, so it hasn't been all that difficult and I've journaled each day of this program so far. And, uh, I I thought I'd run through those just so you can get an idea of some of the things that you can keep an eye out for when you're doing this. So, um, in day one, you know, (laughs) with any diet program, if you feel crappy, on day one, <laughs> that's not that's that's not a good sign. You shouldn't feel crappy on day one. You should feel great. You should feel energized to get going, and that's exactly how I felt. So, um, my weight was one eighty six point six to start this entire process, and um, I I, uh, I was actually a little bit surprised. That seemed that was a little bit higher than I thought it was going to be, but. Um, nevertheless, that was my starting point. And I started the day with a morning walk, walked about two miles. I had a push, uh, day routine, uh, around lunchtime and, uh, it was just a good day. And, and to be honest with you, I, uh, while I had that surprisingly high weigh in for, for the start of the program, I woke up on day two and I was three pounds lighter. And I, I don't know that I've ever lost three pounds over the course of 24 hours before. Um, but the catch with it is, you know, I I know that that's not like I lost three pounds of fat over 24 hours. It's not the case. I I was eating a lot of calories. I was eating a lot of carbohydrates and my body was getting rid of a lot of water weight. So it's cool to see that, that initial drop. And and I think for you, if you structure the program this way, you're probably going to see something similar, uh, 
you, you should see in the first week a decent amount of weight loss, which is really energizing. Uh, we set it up to be aggressive for a reason. When you see the scale weight go down, it, you, you get excited about it, and it really makes you want to work that much harder to continue this program. So uh, I was excited to see that. I had a really, really challenging lower body day on, on day two, um, and my weight actually went back up slightly on day three. And, uh, you know, weight fluctuations are something we all need to be prepared for when we're going through any type of dieting challenge or body transformation. Um, This was a perfect example of sometimes training really hard, sometimes lifting really heavy, which I had a pretty heavy top set of squats on day two. Sometimes that can result in the scale going up, which seems backwards, right? If you have a really, if you have a really challenging training session, you would think it was so challenging. I burned so many calories my weight's going to drop tomorrow. That's not always the case. There, there's a lot of different factors at play with your hydration, uh, your your hormones, uh, you know, stress levels from training like that um, that can make your body weight fluctuate. So in that track and adjust section that we talked about, um, tracking your weight, it's important to you know give it at least a week to see how your weight is trending before you make some type of dramatic change because I saw my weight go down three pounds in one day and the next day it went up a pound and a half. It's it's not all going to be a linear progression, but if you if you stick with it over time, you're gonna see things trending in the right direction. So um, day four, day five, I saw things continue to track in the right direction with my weight. Um, had some pretty tough workouts, continued to do the morning walks, uh, the two mile walks in the morning. And, um, on, uh, day six, which was a rest day, I actually woke up with the lowest weigh in of this entire cut so far. So 181.4 is, uh, my low weigh in to date. I woke up, I'm recording this on Sunday, day seven, and I, I woke up about a half pound heavier. So 181.4 is my low weigh in to date, which is a little over five pounds lost. And I'm super excited about that. One thing I noted that uh, I wanted to share on here was that I noticed how much better my sleep was this weekend because a challenge I gave to myself in this program was to eliminate alcohol. And as we know, as you should know, alcohol can negatively impact your sleep and I slept like 12 hours from Friday night to Saturday morning. It was, I've never, well, not never, but I can't remember the last time I've slept that long in uh, in one, you know, one fell swoop. So uh, it made me wonder why I ever re- reintroduce alcohol back into the routine when I got such good sleep, got good sleep on Saturday night too. So uh, sleep is an important piece to this puzzle as well. It often doesn't get talked about enough when We're talking about making a transformation. Normally, we're just talking about, oh, you got to work hard. You got to bust your ass in the gym and you got to eat clean and you're going to lose weight. But there's a lot of other factors at play and sleep certainly is one of those factors. So um, I'm, uh, I'm excited to continue to have that piece for my own. Uh, challenge in this program to keep alcohol out of the equation and see how much that improves my my sleep as we go through it. But um, that's where I am. Seven days through, I am a little over five pounds down. And and like I said, I think this is a program. It's set up in a way that promotes that type of quick weight loss uh, up front. And like I said, that's really energizing. It's hard to not. If you lose five pounds in a week, it's it's hard to not want to continue with the program that you've set up. So um, I'm excited to go into week two, and I'll continue to document this for for all of you along the way. Uh, Not so much to uh, talk about me and share the success I'm having, uh, but more so to share it in a way that you could potentially pull things from it and apply it to yourself. So with that, uh, you know, I mentioned it before, but definitely head over to the site, chrisgatesfitness.com. Check out the article I wrote on this topic, the three-phase diet, setting up your nutrition strategy. Go into a lot more details about specifically how to set up some of these numbers, how to track and adjust resources that are are free and available for you to use. um, And uh, it'll help you kind of figure out how to put, put this nutrition piece together. And then next week, we'll talk about training. Um, which is not as specific as the nutrition piece because training can be different for everybody. And and, uh, the really important part of losing 
weight and using, you know, your, uh, your fitness to, to help with that process is to do something that you like. So, uh, we'll talk about all of that next week. And, and I think it'll be a really good breakdown for that as well. But, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the podcast. Like I said at the beginning, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can watch these episodes on Facebook and YouTube. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, hit me up. Like I said, if you, I'm a coach, and, and if you're looking for some some help, some guidance to maybe do a, a, a transformation like what this three-phase diet plan is set up to do, um, I'd love to talk to you about your goals, and, and we can see how we, we can work together. So... That's going to wrap it up. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you again soon. See ya.